What's up all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of TsunamiRose.net coming at you live from my craft room here in Las Vegas, Nevada as I do Monday through Friday bringing you junk journal content and videos. So if that's what you're into, please do subscribe to my channel and uh, give me a little thumbs up on this video. It would have really, really helped me out. Um, I'm sharing right now out, uh, I'm sharing the link out to this video. Um, I am starting a new junk journal. It's going to be a grief junk journal, but I'm going to start off the junk journal just like I do with everything else. So I hope you guys uh, join me along for the journey. I will be making two journals, uh, two, two versions of this. One's going to be a prayer journal and one's going to be just a regular journal. So that's what we are going to be doing here. Let me share this last link here. Okay, we are done with that. Okay, so we are back to the light. Here we go. Hi, Miss Jen. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We are starting off right now. Well, I need some water first. Ha! Ha ha ha, I need some water. You know, when in doubt, start a new drunk journal. You know, that's just my motto. When in doubt, start a new drunk journal. I'm doing okay. I'm not going to say I'm doing good. I'm doing okay. <laughs> it was an emotional day for me today. Okay. But anyways. Miss Patricia. Hi, Miss Patricia. How are you? Um, let me talk about supplies first uh, before we get started. I'm going to be using heat and bond. I'm going to be using chipboard and I'm going to be using fabric. Also... Those are the, the things we need to start off here with. Um, it's okay, Jen. It is what it is. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? We all have emotional days sometimes. What are you going to do? Um, so, yeah, I am using, um, to tell you specifically, this is Heat and Bond Light. I use this because I can sew through it. Hi, Janet. How are you? You can use your sewing machine with this uh, material. It's called Heat and Light. It is iron on adhesive, and I like to use this because I don't um, like to have glue seeping through my chipboards. I also don't like to have, uh, um, I don't like the smell of any of those, <laughs> of any of the glues that they use to glue down fabric. So I left, I just dropped the link for the heat and bulb light. Uh, you can get it over at Walmart. It's a pretty regular project. Does my screen look a little blue? I don't know. Okay, that's a little bit better. I am not purple. <laughs> I have my regular table on. I don't I don't really have my cutting board or my uh yeah, my cutting board here. My cutting mat. Okay, so that's the heat and bond that I'm using. Uh it is iron on adhesive that you can sew through. On this cover, I'm actually not gonna sew through it. On the inside I am, but on the outside I'm not. So you could there's this purple one and then there's a red one. The red one you can't sew through, so I use the purple one. Okay, so we've covered the topic of heat and bond that we're using. Uh, and then I'm using this chipboard here, which I got at Amazon. And uh, when you start, sorry if I sound stuffy, I am. <laughs> it's better than me sneezing, though. Uh, so this chipboard here, uh, you could alternatively use cereal boxes. You could just double layer them. That's what I used to do. However, I have now moved on and graduated to this chipboard here, which is essentially the same thickness as two cereal boxes put together. So that step is already covered for me. Uh, I purchased them in sheets of eight and a half by 11, just like this. And you can cut them down to the size of the journal that you wish. Give me one moment, you guys, one moment. And is it just me or is my lighting on point today? Anyways, <laughs> my lighting looks good to me anyways. Uh, yeah, the chipboard that we're using is a nice, heavy, thick chipboard. I It's eight and a half by 11. Uh, I always make my journals the same size. So uh, for me, my cover is this eight and a half by 11 cut in half. Perfectly in half, five and a half, five and a half. That's the cover size that I always make just because it makes everything easier. It also makes my pages easier. I just make, I just always make my journals the same size. 
I always make my journals the same. Okay, so that is the chipboard. I dropped the link for the chipboard. Okay, so that is what we're doing. Um, so I cut my chipboard to five and a half, and it's eight and a half already tall. And my spine, my spine is two inches, and that fits three signatures for me perfectly. Uh, you might want to adjust for yours, but two inch is perfect for mine. And that basically makes the shell of our junk journal here. Okay. I am also using a uh, fabric. I'm using this beautiful fabric. Uh, I think Miss um, Rhonda Lee sent this to me, if I'm not mistaken. Just really, really pretty fabric. It really goes with the kit that I'm using, uh, which is my grief junk journal that I just released. Look how perfectly this cover matches like it's blue it's got red it's got pink it's got all the colors that i need so i'm really happy uh this is the kit that i'm using uh the link is in the description down below if you want to check it out okay so we covered that we covered that okay so uh the fabric that i'm using here is a little bit thicker but that's okay and so you're gonna need two pieces of fabric. You're gonna need a piece of fabric that is gonna be the outside cover, and you're gonna need one piece of fabric that's gonna be the inside cover. Now, as far as sizing, I don't really measure anything. I'm actually terrible, I'm only making one. I'm actually terrible with measuring, so I don't really measure. What you can do is get your cover, and you're gonna place it down here on the fabric, and I leave more than enough space here. This is not how much space I'm gonna have in between my spine and the covers. But just so I can kind of guesstimate, you want about half an inch all the way around. That's what we ultimately wanna end up with. So I always start off with a piece that's slightly bigger. So that's how I get my sizing for that, okay? Just guesstimation on size for that. Now the inside cover, you actually want it to be pretty much exactly this size right here. But because I, I just always like to start off bigger and then I'll go lower when I need to. So I always uh, cut it out bigger. So this is it's supposed to be exactly the same size as this chipboard. But I don't trust myself, so I always start off with a bigger piece. So that's why I never measure it. Okay, so those are the two measurements that you'll need to take. Next, uh, we need to adhere the fabric, the, in, the, outside, oh, the outside fabric, to our cover. Okay, so we need to do that. So what we need to do is we need to adhere this fabric. We need to uh, adhere this fabric to paper first. That's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, to do that, we are going to get our heat about piece. This must be the smaller size. Hang on, I got two sizes here. Okay, this is the right size. Okay, this is the right size. Okay, so we need, uh, where is this one at? Oh, they're all kind of the same size. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay, so uh, you're gonna wanna cut out the piece of heat and bond to be about the same size as your fabric. You can actually make it a tiny bit smaller because it's already too big. So just a tiny bit smaller so that way you don't have any of the glue that seeps out around. Um, but anyways, the heat and bond has two different sides. Hi, Miss Beverly, how are you? It has this side here that you can see that is shiny and it's also textured. That is where the glue is. The other side is matte, not shiny at all, and feels very paper-like. So what you wanna do is you want to uh, put the rough, textured, shiny side to the back of your fabric. So that's what we wanna glue. We wanna glue the heat and bond, texture, texture shiny side down to the back of this fabric. Okay, to do that, I need my ironing mat. And, um, okay, uh, what I need to do is I need to actually, I need to iron this. Because it's a little wrinkly, so we need to iron it. I got my iron here, it's set to hot. I don't know if this fabric is gonna need water. Let's see, hopefully it doesn't. I have it on a uh, high heat. Hang on. We want to get... We definitely want to get out these wrinkles here. 
Oh, I'm gonna need water. I'm gonna need water. Hope everybody had a good day today. Let's see. I'm trying to iron it from the inside here. I'm definitely probably gonna need some water. It's just a little bit. Such a thick fabric, actually. It's pretty thick fabric. Compared to what I'm used to, this is probably twice as thick. I believe it's fabric Miss Rhonda Lee sent me, if I'm not mistaken. Why is it on off? See? That's why it's not. Hang on. My iron is on. It was off. I was so annoyed right now because it just turns off automatically, you know. You know how irons are. Um, okay. Anybody has any questions? <laughs> any questions, concerns, sly remarks? That's what one of, one of my college teachers used to say, sly remarks. <laughs> okay. That's better. It needs water, though. It really does. I'm going to get some water. Because you do want this to be nice and, and ironed out, because you're not going to... I should have done this before the show. <laughs> Hang on, I got my little water cup here. It doesn't have too much water on it. Don't mind me using my personal water here. You know, is it supposed to be distilled? Because I think I always just put regular water in there. Oh, hang on, the lip is funny. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think I got some of the water on the iron itself. Maybe it's supposed to be distilled water. Um, hang on, where's the spray? There's the spray. We've got to wet this a little bit because it's it is way too. Alright, that worked like a charm. There we go. That's what I needed. Okay. When I okay, I, I'm not used to ironing things that are not for crafts, so it took me a minute to discover the water feature on my iron. <laughs> I don't think my mom ever used it. I don't think I remember her ever using the water feature on an iron. So that was new to me. <laughs> and now I see how wonderful it is because look how quickly it took out those wrinkles. Um, let me do this one too because this one both both of them need to be um, ironed out. Okay, thank you, Jen. <laughs> That's why I messed up my iron. Okay. I don't mean messed up, but like the bottom of it, you see how it has like that rust color? I don't know why. But it has a little bit of a rust color. We iron these out here. Hang on, I have to spray a little bit over here. And actually over here. Ooh. It hurts my hand. I have to spray it with my right hand. It literally, it made my finger twitch right now. It's not good. <laughs> that is not good. Okay. Okay. There we go. Let me just dry it off. Okay. Oop. Yeah. I don't know if parchment paper work with me here. I didn't know it was supposed to be distilled. My bad. <laughs> I just thought about it right now. I'm like, wait, what if this is supposed to be distilled? Okay. So now that we got our two fabric pieces ironed. Again, like I was trying to say, you got your piece of fabric. You got your heat and balm light. Okay. I'm going to turn my fabric around. This part right here is still wet. Still feels wet. Miss Gigi, hi Miss Gigi, how are you Miss Gigi, hi Miss Gigi. Okay, so textured, shiny part of the heat and balm goes to the back of your fabric. Okay, all right, we're all in. 
this piece of uh, parchment paper so I can cover it. And then what you want to do is, again, I have my iron set to high. Um, what you want to do is you want to iron for about 30 seconds, pick up the iron and move it. You don't want to slide the iron at this point because basically the glue is on a sheet of plastic and the glue is wet technically. So if you move your iron around, the glue will slide on the back. I think it's for a longevity of the iron. Look at me, I'm ruining my nice expensive iron. <laughs> I love this iron though. The fact that it's cordless, I love it. The base has a cord, but the iron itself is cordless. And I honestly, I love it. Is it worth $100? I don't know, but it looks cool. And it's very light. The iron that I bought for $20 was so heavy. I couldn't use it. I could not not use it. So I had to buy this light iron for me because my hand was just killing me with this $20 iron I bought. So here we are. We have this nice. This takes a minute. So <laughs> this, this does take a minute because you want to go back. And you want to make sure all of it is adhered. So you definitely want to go back and, and forth a little bit on the same spots. And then we'll check it and make sure that it adhered all the way. If not, we'll have to we'll have to do this again. You want a mini iron? This is a, yeah, the mini ones. I could I could see myself using the mini ones. I thought about getting one of those. I think they're only like $30. Okay, let's put it over here. I get like 30 seconds and then pick up and move. You can't singe your fabric. <laughs> Ask me how I know you can't singe your fabric. So you don't want to leave it on there too long. That's why I say about 30 seconds and then mute. Yeah, the mini irons are cool. Um, I think I've seen people working with wax and I think they use a mini iron. So I want to work with wax, but I, and I bought wax, but I still haven't figured out what I'm going to do because I was supposed to buy the mini iron. <laughs> so I have to buy a mini iron. Uh, let's see here. Okay. You can check and see if it adhered by tear, pulling it apart like this. And you can see the shiny part on the fabric. There's a layer of glue now on the fabric. We basically made our fabric a big piece of, a big sticker piece. I want uh, wax. Yeah, I want to work with wax. I bought wax because Kelly Snow is always working with wax. That girl is like the wax queen. She's always waxing stuff. <laughs> well, craft wax. I don't know about anything else. I should say that. She's always waxing some mini embellishments. I don't know. She does cool things with wax, so I thought I would get some wax from her, and I did. But now I have it, and I'm like, uh, what do I do? <laughs> Let me set it back to make sure it's still on high. I have to wait till it stops beeping. It's going to be one moment, or blinking, I should say. It needs to reset. But what we're doing here, it's working. Like I said, when you pull the, the, the paper here you can see the shininess on our fabric. That's the heat effect. These wax makes paper translucent. Yes, that sounds like what I want. Okay, so now we're high. So, I mean, we're on high. So let's go ahead and continue. I want to read. I want. I don't think this piece is adhered. Is it adhered? No, it's not. When it's not adhered, the glue will bounce back to the, the heat and bonding. You won't see the, the shininess on your fabric. So that's how you know it's not glued down. Keep going. Yeah, a lot of people do cool, cool things with wax. And I need to, I need to get into that. <laughs> I want to work with some of it. Okay. Let me do this part here. Again, this is the part that kind of takes a, a little bit more time. Well, this whole process takes a little bit more time, but it, it creates journals that to me 
are sturdy, high quality, and they sell for the most amount of money compared to like a soft cover journal. So to me, it's worth the extra steps to take to make a nice hard cover for myself here. And then using this technique, so I get nice flat, flat fabric against the journal. Okay, I wanna say that's it. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing with the inside cover. Got this inside cover here. Let me iron it out again. Just because I can. Okay, so for this, let me find the page. Okay, this will work. Again, the textured, shiny part of the heat and bond light. Kelly was the first time I ever saw you. She does such cool things. The textured, shiny part of the heat and bond light goes to the back of your fabric. Okay, so is this the one that's bigger here? Sorry, I cut a couple pieces out. Is it this one? Oh, they're in both sides. <laughs> I cut them both big. Okay, so back of the fabric to the shiny texture side of the heat and bond. And because there's glue here on the sides, which I wish I didn't have. Hang on, I don't want it. I don't want it, and I don't need it. Just because this is gonna end up sticking, so I don't want it. So let me get my little rotary board here. Don't I don't want extra glue. Not this much. That's too much. Much too much. I might finally have to get a new uh, rotary cutter. I can't take this off. This won't come off so I can change the blade. It's not, I don't even know what I did. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's never happened. This this thing here, won't. this uh, bolt here will come off. Okay, anyways. Anyways, this way. So heat and bond to the back of the fabric. Make sure that's the back. Yeah, that looks faded. Okay. All right, I'm going to get parchment paper on top. I'm not ironing on the back of this because there is a little bit of extra glue here that will get on your ironing board. So that's why I'm using my um, uh, parchment paper here. I'm just gonna glue it down a little bit and then, cause it's already adhered, it's not gonna move around on me, I'll turn it around and then I can iron on the heating bond itself. How is everybody today? Hello, hello. Um, if you missed me talking about to the things that you'll need uh, to make this type of cover, I use this chipboard that I get from Amazon, which is basically uh, two, the thickness of two cereal boxes put together, which is what I would normally do to make a cover. Back in the day when I had a lot of cereal boxes, I would just glue two pieces of cereal box together to get this thickness. So if you can't get this chipboard, uh, just do that beforehand. Um, otherwise, I am using this chipboard from Amazon. It's actually a pretty good deal. For how many sheets you get, it's not bad. I hope that link is still valid. <laughs> Sometimes I go back at the things out of stock. Okay, so I'm using that chipboard. I use, uh, they come in eight and a half by 11 sheets like this. I cut it in half and that each half is my co uh, one cover. So front and back cover is on one sheet for me. Uh, the cover ends up being five and a half by eight and a half. And then you'll need uh, another sheet for a two inch spine. Uh, so that's what I do. What else? I need to get the link for the heat and bond here. Also, the link for the heat and bond, which I love using because it's like a no mess, no stress glue, and it doesn't smell. That's one of the reasons why, honestly, I use heat and bonds. <laughs> I cannot stand all of those fabric tack and all those fabric adhesives. It's too much for me. 
This is completely odorless. <laughs> Does it take a little bit longer? Sure, but I don't need to be smelling all that stuff. It's just not good for you. Okay. So now that that's done, we adhered our heat and bond to the back of our fabric. That's the inside cover. This is the outside cover. Uh, if you're just tuning in, uh, Robin, it is. I think I have a link for it. <laughs> yeah, I do have a link for it. I didn't know if anybody wanted to check it out, but the iron is pretty freaking awesome. There's a link for it if you want to check it out. Uh, so to figure out the size of your cover, uh, it depends on what size cover you want to make. It doesn't matter. It's the same technique. Uh, if you want to make it eight by eight, it's the same technique. You want to have, uh, I don't measure anything out. So to get, kind of get a guesstimation, the outside cover, you're going to want at least half inch all the way around. This is what my final cover is going to kind of look like. It's not spaced out this way, but you want at least half inch around, which is what we're going to end up with, which is why I have about a one inch around. Uh, for the inside cover, you actually want it to pretty much be the same size as these three pieces here put together. But of course, I always I always overestimate and then I'll whittle it down. So uh, that's what we're working with. Um, okay, so next what we need to do is we need to glue this fabric to paper so that we can adhere it to our cover. Peel off. So you peel off the back of the heating bar. And now you've basically made your fabric into a gigantic sticker. So there's the fabric. There's the heat and bond on that side. Um, if you didn't adhere it right, you'll have missing chunks of this on here. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I thought I had sneeze. Okay, so <laughs> before you toss this away, because this is what's left of the heat and bond. There's no more glue on it. There's no more texture. It's just shiny, and the back is matte. You can use this to protect your surface. You can paint on it. You can get glue on it. Later on, I end up actually folding this together to kind of protect my signatures. You'll see, but this stuff is pretty valuable. You don't want to. You don't want to get rid of this right away. So yeah, I definitely save the back of the, what's left over of the heating bomb as just like scrap paper, basically. Okay, so that is our uh, inside cover here. we glue them back. Here is our outside cover. And um, there's different ways that you can make a journal cover using fabric and heat and bond. Uh, you could do what I'm doing right now, this whole process of doing it on a chipboard. Uh, you could also, um, alternatively, you can heat and bond fabric to cardstock and make a cover that way. I've literally just glued this to cardstock, folded it in half, and there's my journal. It's nice and sturdy. It's fabric on the inside. Start car cardstock on the inside. I've done that plenty of times. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this to paper, and then we're going to adhere that to our chip. Okay? So... Let me get my paper that I use. And the paper that I use, let me get this paper. Okay, here. <laughs> the paper that I use is called newspaper print. And so I guess this is basically like what you would print a newspaper on, essentially, I suppose. Um, but it's also called packing paper. Hi, Letitia. Did I say hi to Robin? Hi, Robin. Hi, Lisa. How are you guys? Um, this is... Uh, I pick it up normally at Walmart. It's called packing paper at Walmart. It's next to the boxes. It's next to the uh, bubble wrap. It's next to all the moving supplies. Essentially, you would crumble this up to protect things, you know, from something on top or from something from the back. But this is uh, <clears throat> packing paper. Um, I've also heard it called as newsprint paper. I, again, I buy it at Walmart. You can also buy it online um, on Amazon, but I think it's cheaper at Walmart. Um, okay, so we are going to adhere this fabric to this paper. That's what we want to do. So let me go ahead and pick up my iron. And I'm going to just leave it in the middle. Again, what I want to do eventually is flip it over. But um, I don't want it to, to move around on me. So, oh, I didn't know this frayed. Okay, this fabric frays. Okay. 
So I'm just trying to melt the glue a little bit here in the middle. And here you can't slide your iron around because the heat and bond is no longer on a sheet of plastic. So let me go ahead and turn this around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to iron on the back because the back is where the heat and bond is and that's what you want to melt. Okay. All right. How is everybody doing today? Yo, I thought it was, I don't know why I thought it was like Sunday. Why did I think it was Sunday? I don't know. In my head, I'm like, oh, it's the weekend. I don't have to go live. And then I asked my husband, what day is it? Is it Monday? And he's like, Daisy, it's Tuesday. <laughs> it's like, Daisy, get it together. It's Tuesday. <laughs> Get your life together. <laughs> you guys. It was a, I was a mess today. Okay. So again, we are trying to melt the heat and bond. So this does take... Why is it... Why is it like steaming? Is it because of the water underneath? Why is it making steaming noises? It normally never steams. <laughs> it's probably because of the water. It's not leaking water anywhere. You do want to take your time with this. You want to make sure you ad properly adhere it. Adhere everything. Properly melt the heat and bond. I'm trying to get back into crafting. I lost my mojo. I'm trying to get back to it. Mm. Well, watching YouTube videos is the perfect way to make you want to make anything. I've already watched a couple videos on this girl making pottery. And I swear... I swear I'm, a, I'm the world's next great potter. I don't know why, but I feel like I can do it. <laughs> I feel like I can do it. It, it. Watching YouTube videos of other people making stuff, like I said, it made me want to like tear up my floors and replace my floors, even though I have no skills whatsoever. But those videos really made me believe I could do it. <laughs> I always, when I lose my mojo, I always start by um, organizing and cleaning my craft room. Because halfway through that, I'm like, all right, this is this is boring. I want to make something. <laughs> Another thing I would do when I don't really want to craft entirely is I would cut paper down. Just cut paper down to size, to the size that I know that I need it to be. I would do that. I would organize my organize my scraps. Let's see here. And I would do things like make little tags, make envelopes, just make little something little, just see, you know, get off the ground and do something. Okay, so there's that. There's the outside cover. Now let's add here the inside cover. Again, I'm going to try and melt the glue here in the middle so I can flip it around and it's not moving around on me. Okay, see, just like that, I'm melting it. Okay. Turn around. Like I said, you see, you see, it's like just stuck in the middle right where, <laughs> where I ironed. Okay, so here's, here's this. I'm going to go ahead and... Just keep melting away till I have my cover. Uh, basically, it's I'm making fabric paper is what I'm doing right now. This fabric's a little bit thinner, so it'll probably be done quicker. Organizing scraps. That's a good. It's a good. It's a good hobby. It's a good little thing to keep you busy. I moved and trying to find everything. Oh yes. Oh yes. My craft room is about 75% of what I would pack. <laughs> I own more craft supplies than I do any other material possessions. <laughs> okay, make sure the edges here are good. We see to be good. Everything, I just kind of pick at the edges. And then you can always tell here in the middle, if you don't see a darkness, like where you haven't glued it down, then it's not glued down. Okay, so now we have our fabric on paper. Okay, 
So let me move on. I gotta put this away. I gotta turn off my iron. I am done ironing. That was too much work. You know. This is how I put this is how I put my wool pad up. Really? Okay. I have a clip here and then I have it on this hook. So let me put it away. I gotta turn off my iron. I'll forget. Let me unplug it. Okay. We are going to transition to our next thing. Table is not light. I mean, not hot, so that's good. Okay. Now, if you are going to start working with fabric journals, I do suggest you get yourself a rotary cutting mat and a rotary cutter. I suggest you get that ASAP if you're going to start working with fabric journals. It just makes it so much easier. I just got this, uh, this one I have, this is the first one I ever got. Um, and it's, uh, what, 18 by 12? And it worked for me for lots of, lots of years. You can see it's been very well, very well loved, very well used. And now I kind of just use it, um, kind of like a portable, because right now my, my big table, the iron, I don't want to mess up my big one, so I pull out my little one. Normally my table is a big old cutting mat. Okay. A bonus that you could think about getting is one of these long rulers here. Uh, this is an investment. It's not the cheapest thing, but it is uh, one of the best things I've ever purchased for this particular um, technique. Uh, for many years, what I used was the <laughs> the cutting, the the cutting, what are they called? The, 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 uh, the sandwich boards of my Sizzix. They have these long sandwich boards that you cut, you know, you roll through the, the Sizzix to cut out. I use those for the longest time. They're cricket, but it's okay. Nothing of this exactly has to be straight except for this one. But you can get away with it. Um, but, uh, oh wait, that's the iron pad. I'm supposed to click on the ruler. Oh, I got the ruler. I didn't get the handle. The handle is actually just a, what is it, a shower? Shower rail, shower holder, shower something. But um, see, I I seen these at Walmart, but uh, I they was sold to me as like a quilt ruler holder, but it's actually just a, a, a suction cup shower stall handle. Anyways, I'm gonna cut these out. <laughs> you could also you know, just use scissors. You really could. This is technically paper, unless you cut the fabric. It's paper, so you can. You can use just regular scissors also. Just to make my life easier. I have to show it this. Okay, let me move my mat around. But again, if you are going to work with fabric and junk journals, definitely get yourself a little cutting board and definitely get yourself a rotary mat. You can get um, cheaper blades on on Amazon for the for the rotary cutter, just so you know, because I didn't know I was buying two for ten dollar blades at Walmart for the longest time until I found um, this supplier on Amazon, and he ha they had like twenty or I can't remember how many blades I even got. I had like twenty blades for like ten bucks. <laughs> So definitely buy the, the blades at um, Amazon, and you will need to switch blades often. Okay, so we're cutting out our fabric here. This is our outside cover. And so, yeah, like I said, we basically made uh, fabric paper. It's literally just paper. Okay, let me cut out the inside cover, and then we can get to assembling the outside cover. The inside cover is pretty much just this. This is as as, as soon as I cut it down to size, that's that's it for the cover. Uh, the inside cover, I end up, I actually sew my signatures into my signature. And so to do that, I need um, this. This is the inside of the cover. 
And so it's easy to run through my sewing machine. And I love it. I love it. Like it a lot too, but had a running water. Ooh, you had a mini kitchen? That's fabulous. That sounds fabulous. So once I knew that I liked this technique, I started investing in things like this ruler and uh, what else? Different quilting rulers now that I have different quilting rulers. I, I like to cut my fabric and stuff here on my mat. Okay, so there we go. This is our inside cover. I still need to cut it down to size. But basically, this is what I sew my signatures into. And this gets glued into the, the outside cover, which we're going to work on next. So I will need the outside of these uh, heat and bombs to kind of work as a, oh, as a surface protector. Okay. Hang on, I got my tape. I'm just gonna tape these together. And then look, I got one, one big surface. Okay, so here's what we need to do. Okay. Get our covers, our spine, and our outside fabric cover. And let me decide which direction I want it to be. The rosebuds are going this way, so it has to go this way. Sorry, I was hearing the weirdest sound. It sounds like a train, but I don't live near any trains. <laughs> and just so I don't forget, I'm gonna write that on the, on the, it's just paper, so I'm writing it on paper. So what we need to do is we need to glue our covers to this, okay? So for that, I need two things. I need just the original, this is just the original um, piece of chipboard. And what I like to do, before I did this, I never kept my, I never kept anything straight. So <laughs> this is, this is why I do this step. Every step that I do, I've messed up and uh, I found this to be a lot easier. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark. I'm going to outline this sheet here. And that basically gives me a guide. So I'm not, it's like a straight edge, you know? Okay, so what we need to do is we need to glue this uh, here first. Let me just kind of guesstimate. I don't want to be too close to the edge if I don't have to. Okay, it'll be about here. Let me just make sure that I mark it because, again, I'm marking it because I literally forget where. <laughs> And my eyes are crooked or something, so something's always off. So I always, I trace, and that's how I get things to work. Okay, so we got our uh, cover here. And we, I use a Turbo Tacky Glue. I love Turbo Tacky Glue. And this is basically one of my, one of my three craft glues. I use Turbo uh, Tacky Glue, heat and bomb, which is technically an adhesive. And a little bit of a of a Elmer's extra strength glue stick. And that's pretty much all of the glues that I use. Okay, so I love this glue because it's good for the cover as well as good for um, embellishments and stuff. I just it's my everyday glue. Okay, so we are gonna get this um, glued on pl placed right here, essentially. Hang on, my glue is, my glue is stuck or something. I need to do what you said, Miss Patricia. Miss Patricia told me to dunk this, uh, this top in hot water, which is honestly what I should do. Okay, so I have uh, this bottle here. I have the nub cut down really low so that my spout is pretty thick. And I have another bottle with the spout that's small for embellishments. Okay, we wanna make sure we get a good amount of glue on here. And this glue has no order whatsoever. 
So, well, it does kind of, I mean, it smells like glue, but it's nothing like toxic smelling. I can't stand things that have like that toxic smell. I can't do it. Okay. So we got that. And then I use a silver, silver, a silicone spatula, a silver spatula, a silicone spatula to spread the glue. And I should actually be doing this on top of this. <laughs> Top of this, but I'm not for some reason. I always try and protect myself from glue being everywhere. With this technique, and when things, when you want to charge a nice amount for something, it has to be clean. It has, it can't have glue all over it. You know what I mean? So I always, I get like those chefs that like have to clean along the way. <laughs> That's how I get. When it comes to all this glue here. Okay, so we got the, the glue all over the place. Okay, check. And then we are going to put it where we said it was going to be. Because like I said, my eyes are crooked. I would never put things straight. I would always put things not where they're supposed to be. So this way I can like physically see <laughs> where I'm messing up. Hang on, I need a towel. I need a paper towel a moment. Ooh, my hubby finally finished painting my kitchen. <laughs> Only took him two years, but hey, that's fine. Whatever. I wasn't going to do it, so I didn't want to complain. <laughs> so my kitchen was finally not flamingo pink anymore. Yay. Yay. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I got my um, bone folder, boning knife, whatever it's called. And I'm going to flatten the cover against it. So that way, again, it's nice and flat. It pushes excess glue out the way. Like right here, it pushed them, some of this excess glue out. Okay. So next thing that I need is... What you, this is <laughs> such a random thing that I use. It's this cover that I took off a book a long time ago. And there's really nothing special about it. It's not very thin. I mean, it's not the thickest, but it's not very, it's not thin either. Um, and basically, it's just a book cover I took off. I placed it up against the edge of this, of uh, the front cover, or whatever it is. And I'm going to score. And that's basically the little gap that I use, the little gusset in between my spine and my cover. So, I need that. <laughs> so, now next we're going to glue down the spine. Let's go ahead and move that because this is ridiculous. This is what I'm supposed to get glue on, not that. Okay, so get the spine here, get glue on it. What color what? Why did you say what color? Oh, it's white. It's just white. <laughs> it's just white now. I am not very creative at all with paint. I just painted my whole house white. My mom had it like 10 different colors. It's just white now. <laughs> it's just like regular kitchen white. <laughs> and that's great. I'd rather have that than a pink flamingo kitchen. I don't know whose idea. Well, I know whose idea was my mom. I don't know why. I don't know why. That's the question I need to know why. <laughs> Okay, my cover again, my spine. I'm going to place it down where I said I was going to place it down. Okay, all right. And now I'm going to do the same thing. But I do want this, this cover here. So that if excess glue comes out, it just will go on the on the heat and bond paper. Okay, so we can hear that. There we have our spine and our journals coming together. I should have taped it on the other side. That was silly of me. <laughs> you can't tape like wax paper basically. It's a bit. Okay, whatever. 
Okay, so now that we got that, next what I need to do, I wiped down the glue because the glue, I didn't notice that the glue was actually like getting all gunky on the cover. <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Okay, so again, my cover, my random book cover. And that is where my other cover is going to go. Okay, so let's do that. Last cover here. Got to glue it down. There we go. If you guys have a little moment, please do give me a little thumbs up. I am going to be continuing on working on this cover or this journal during the week. I will be gone next week, but during this week, I will. I think I'll be able to get the signature sewn in for sure. But tomorrow I'll show you how I get my signatures together. So we're doing everything step by step here. So let's see. Funny, I know what a book that, you know what that cover, yeah, you know that cover. I bought literally like 30 of these books. <laughs> I love that book. It's called like the Lifetime Encyclopedia of Agriculture, Horticulture, Plants. I can't remember what it says. But I know it's the, the Time Life Encyclopedia of Plants or something. Or like House Plants or something. Something like that. That's why I have one of those covers. Because I've literally cut up like 30 of those books. Every time I see one, I grab it <laughs> at the store every time. Every single time. Okay, here is my other cover. Silicone brushes are so superior because I can take glue from where it's excess and then put it where I need it to be. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. I love my little silicone brush. Okay. So now that's where our cover goes. Oh, oh, I hope I don't push up too much glue because I don't have anything underneath. <laughs> and it's going to push out glue. You see how it pushes out glue? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So now next what we need to do is we need to... Um, Cut it down. This is essentially our book right here. As you can see, it's coming together. The I need to trim it down is what I need to do because I need I only need half an inch. I only need half inch all the way around, so everything else needs to get cut off. Half inch. If you don't trust yourself, you can make it one inch, but half inch is pretty much all you need. Finch, half inch, half inch. Other side. And it does bow, just so you know, it, the pages and the, the covers will literally bow to the last moment. After you put the inside cover in, after you sew in your signatures, sewing, um, gluing in the signature, gluing in the inside cover is like the last step. So right after that last step, it will not bend anymore. But right now it bends because the glue is wet. Once the cover is completely dry, it will not bend on you. Same as if you use a cereal box. It won't bend on you once it's dry. Okay, so that is basically our cover right here. You guys can see. Now we need to glue this down. So what I need to do is I need to make a couple of cuts. Where's my pencil? Where did my pencil go? I have another pencil, but it's not the pencil I was using. <laughs> okay. So we need to make a couple of cuts here. 
we need to um, cut the edges here and to cut the corners. What the trick I've learned is to basically, if you make this a perfectly 90 degree angle, don't get it crooked. If you get it crooked, it just doesn't work. But if you get it at a nice crisp 90 degree angle right there, that is how it's done. So I used to just fold it over and not think about it and they really wouldn't come out the same and then I kind of score it with my nails. So I get a nice stark line there. So when I didn't make sure it was like a straight little angle, it didn't work out. And now that I do that, it's like the little trick that I needed. So this right here has to be at 90 degrees. Okay. Next thing that I need to do is I need to score the little gusset here, uh, the little space in between the uh, spine and the cover. I draw a little triangle there. And this kind of helps the bulkiness right there in those corners. So I'm going to cut that out. Don't get too close to the, to the chipboard though. Okay. These scissors are terrible. Where are my fabric scissors? Here they are. Fabric scissors are way better. Here we go. Cut out these little triangles here. On the other side. And now we need to cut this, the corners. Now the corners, if you are not going to use book, cup, book corners, you want to cut it a little bit beyond the line. Just a little bit, well actually I'm gonna add book corners, but I'm still gonna do it. This, this fabric is a little bit thick though, so I might not wanna do that so much. So you get that perfect angle once you get that corners straight. Oh, it's magical. It's magical. Okay. This is what it should look like before you glue it down. We got the little gusset here cut out, little corners, little triangles, and then we got the corners. I showed y'all how to get it to fit perfectly. And now, we need a glue. So, get the glue off this heat and bond here so I can use it as a protector. Okay, so I like to glue the long sides down first. I don't know why, but this feels better. <laughs> Doesn't matter, but it feels better. Okay, here you don't want to get too, too much glue. You just want to get just enough glue. And then I am going to slide my glue over. Okay. And what you want to do, actually, let's, uh, let me, I'm going to, just wave it around like that just a little bit, just so the glue kind of dries just a tiny bit. It becomes tacky, and then it's a lot easier to get it to stick than when the glue is wet. Okay. What you also want to do is take your bone folder and kind of pull it down. And this will help it stick to the chipboard. Okay. It's coming together. Oh, this fabric is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. I'm surprised it goes so well with my kit. Okay. Let's glue this side down now. I'm always trying to make sure that it glued down. I know it glued down, but 
I gotta check. I gotta check again. Okay, let's do this side here now. That is a kind of a trick to, uh, you think, oh, it's got glue, now it's going to stick. But actually, this, this glue for this part right here in particular works better if I kind of let it dry a little bit. So again, I'm going to wave it around to get the glue to dry a, a tiny little bit. Not entirely, but just a tiny, tiny little bit. Okay. Hang on, I just got glue on the cover. I'm trying not to freak out. But give me one moment. Okay. If you do get glue on your cover, because <laughs> I accidentally laid it down here without noticing, get a wet wipe. And while the glue is still wet, it should come off. That should work. Okay. So this side. Bone folder it down. I was actually um, a little scared of this top because it's thicker than I normally use. But um, this is great. It's perfect. This works out so nice. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Okay, let's do the small sides now. And if you did that angle correctly, then this should meet up perfectly. See how it meets up perfectly with that? I love it. And I put book corners on mine, so you won't be able to see that anyways, but I like knowing that it's nice. <laughs> I like knowing I did that. Right. Okay, and now this side over here. No, this is not, I don't think this is a bed sheet. I don't think it was. I think, no, this is just fabric that Miss uh, Rhonda Lee sent me. It was not a bed sheet. I believe the inside cover was some sort of like tablecloth because it was round. <laughs> so I imagine it was some sort of tablecloth. But no, this was just fabric, I believe. I think I cut off the fabric edge. But normally I, I wear, I use a, fabric. Okay. They're just fraying on me a little bit. That's okay. Go ahead and wave it around a little bit. Just a little bit. And then we're basically done with part one. We are basically done with part one, which is making the covers. So here is the outside cover, and then here is the inside cover, which to finish, the outside cover needs to be the same exact size as the inside cover. That is what we do here. So I'm going to trace it, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it slightly smaller than what I traced. So I'm tracing the cover because I hate to measure. <laughs> I hate to measure anything. So that's all right. <laughs> just going to whittle it down until we get it right. <laughs> okay. So I believe what I needed to do is be um, one 
quarter inch less than what I measured is what I believe I want it to be. So let me cut it around and then we'll cut down quarter inch. Could I do it all in one move? Probably. Probably, but I like to do it the tough way. <laughs> I really need a new rotary. I need to change out the blade, but it won't let me change out the blade. Okay, so once we get to, and then I need to sew all the way around, but I'll just do that off camera. Basically what I do is I will zigzag stitch or do like a serger stitch all the way around the edge. That's what I do for my covers. Okay. So now it should be exactly the same size as this cover here. And it is, and that's a problem because I actually need it to be a quarter inch smaller all the way around. Quarter inch, I measured it before. That's what it is, it's quarter inch. Make sure this stays straight here. Oh, I need some coffee. And like a PB and J, that's what I want, I want coffee and a PB and J. <laughs> Okay, so let's cut off quarter inch that way. We'll cut off quarter inch this way. That's the one measurement I had to do all day. <laughs> That's the one measurement. I'm good with that. Okay, so now this cover should fit right in this. I think it needs... I might have to, no, 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 I think we're good. You could, if you could barely see the inside cover here, that's what I want. That's what I want it to look like, just barely be able to see the inside cover. And once I kind of dig this into the gusset here, it kind of shortens it a little bit. So then it's the perfect size. Okay, you guys, that's going to be it for me tonight. Looks like Waverly Drapery Foam. I don't know what it was. Hang on. It is, oh my gosh, Miss Elisa knows her Waverly fabric. <laughs> That's what it is. It's Harbor View and Authentic Waverly 100% cotton. Is that what 100% cotton feels like? Because that is thick. <laughs> Lisa, that's a good, that was a good guess, though. So that is it. I hope you all learned something. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, part one of uh, starting a junk journal cover. Junk journal, I should say. This is going to be my grief journal. So if you guys want to check uh, me out for the rest of this, please uh, join me tomorrow. I'll be here same time at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, we'll go live for a nice, fun, crafty hour. So thank you so, so much. He used to make cut. Oh, is it for draperies? I thought it was, it was really thick. It was a really thick fabric. I thought it was more like upholstery. I, had, I guess it could be cut. Okay, everybody, have a good night. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. I hope everybody, like I said, learned something. If not, I hope you had fun. <laughs> That's all that matters, okay? Everybody have a good night, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Thank you guys so, so much for your support. If you're looking for Dark Journal Printables, check out my store at uh, SonomaRose.net or on Etsy. Thank you guys so, so much, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.